So I've gone and uh, cleaned up this hatch. Um, it has a couple of uh, plastic screens on there for protection. Um, the top one's just for shipping. I've removed that and the visibility is heaps better. Um, along with that uh, nice new lighting rack in it, um, visibility is much better than it that comes out of factory. Um, you can see the 3D printed gun still in there. Now I've got a couple of things I want to do. Um, if I just flip this around a bit, down in these corners, and I don't know why they do it, but straight out of the, the factory, you can see they've assembled it with the reservoir here underneath um, the legs. So what happens is you get this gap in here, um, and all of these cabinets that I've had have been pretty good leak-wise, except for these corners. Now they seem to leak. Part of it is because uh, the foam double-sided uh, tape on the inside of it, um, it, it's not pressed on as tightly in the corners because of this in the assembly, um, as far as I can tell. So what I'm going to do, uh, as you can see, I've gone through and um, cleaned all the media out. Um, and now uh, I'm going to uh, split the cabinet apart through the seam here, and I'm going to reseal this join and I'm going to move these legs onto the outside here. Um, I'm also going to take these gloves off uh, and fit some rubber gloves. Uh, these ones are just, they're kind of like giant dishwashing gloves. Um, so I'm going to throw one of them on. I had to replace one on another cabinet that had holes in it. Um, so I've got one good one uh, and for the other one I've just repaired the holes uh, because this is just for testing um, and if it does the job that I want it to do, um, I'll end up swapping uh, those gloves out or at least getting one more replacement so it's got a pair of nice gloves on it. Uh, maybe I'll put the other one on the old dishwasher cabinet. You can see I've gone back to some sandblasting gloves because um, I've stolen the gloves off that for something else as well. So um, that's where I'm at now. I'll redo uh, the seal in there. Um, it's just something that's quite important if you don't want to find little puddles appearing around underneath there. Um, so I haven't done much more performance testing on this. I've had a whole lot of other things I've been busy with. Um, I've taken up some work welding. Um, so this has kind of gone on the back burner uh, for now. But I will go through and replace those gloves. Um, and I'll repair those leaks. And then I'll get back into the testing. Um, and, and do some more performance work. Uh, on it. The other thing is I will need to um, up the top here These end up leaking the water fills in on the top of them They drip through and they leak and these here always leak really badly as well um, So I'm going to do something about those I'm just trying to come up with a fairly elegant such um, elegant solution to it um, That can be replicated elsewhere. So and that's where I'm at now um, I'll come back once I've done that um, I've split the cabinet and resealed it, put those new gloves in, and then um, may do another quick demonstration before I change out those filters. So there we go, as you can see now, um, on the lower side there, right over here, the leg actually sits lower uh, than this base, and you can see in the middle there, um, all the silicon that's coming through. Um, it's a little bit messy, but it's not a big deal. I'll probably come through later and seal more of that later, um, particularly if it is leaking, but on the inside you can kind of see the silicon's just coming through on uh, Right the way on the inside there. And you see how quickly that rusts out, which is one of the issues that you have uh, With these cabinets is um, they're made with pretty cheap steel So they'll rust really really quickly so that can be replaced with stainless at a later date if need be But I mean that's just a cheap cabinet um, otherwise You can just drain the water out of it while it's being stored and that'll protect it for a bit longer um, new gloves in there they actually fit really, really nicely. You can see through there. Um, that's the second hand one with the repair on it. Uh, but for what I'm doing here, that'll test up nicely. Heat better than the other, other gloves. These other gloves here, as you can see, they've got like a felt style of material on the inside there. And the water just creeps into that and seeps along and they'll leak. So these all rubber gloves um, will be much, much better. Um, so I'm going to let that go off and later in the week I'll come back and we'll fill it up with more beads. We'll do another test, we'll start playing around with some nozzles um, to see whether or not we can get some better performance out of it. Um, but the main next thing we'll be doing is that ventilation. So 
Um, that's where we're at with that build. Right, so it's about uh, 11 o'clock um, on a Thursday night. This is a few days now after the first portion of the video where I was uh, sealing up um, the split in the cabinet. Um, I think I mentioned the last one, I removed that um, the plastic covers on there um, and it's just heaps clearer in there now. You see I've been doing a little bit of testing, the water's quite black. Um, but what I've done since the last video, uh, well the start of this video, um, was to add this on. Now how I did that, um, you can see just this steel flange here um, that's, that's sealed in there. Um, that usually comes on the inside there um, and it holds that filter on there. Um, I may go and put a filter on the top of it if I need to, um, but so far it hasn't caused me any issues. Um, I've just squeezed in a sponge into the back there just to try and um, allow it to breathe if it wants to, um, but also to collect all the media and water and, and hopefully um, that will prevent water coming out. I haven't actually looked. Uh, that's old, I might rub that off so I can see whether anything new comes out. Um, but that's no longer really an issue because this is a, a good size, I think it's 80 mil um, drain pipe on there. So um, plenty of flow to come through that. Um, lights seem to be working uh, very nicely. It's a lot easier to see now that I've removed the film. Um, but what I'm gonna do is I've got this part in here um, that you may remember from the uh, first video that I did on this cabinet. Um, so this is the other side there. So if I just flick it over, you should be able to see there. That was how it came up last time. Um, it was quite slow, but it worked. So um, now that I've fixed a couple of things, it's going to be a little bit easier for me to see, I think, um, while I'm testing. Uh, for this video at least, I'll be looking through the camera. Uh, let me just see if I can change that. Yeah, there we go. Um, as you can see, it's still got the 3D printed gun on, like I mentioned last time. Um, for some reason, these ones work really, really well in this setup. Um, better than the brass ones and um, much better than the um, guns with a trigger on them. Um, so, let me just pop this off. See if it makes it any better. Sorry. Um, so yeah, I now that I've, I've made a couple of changes, um, I've got these gloves in there, much better. Um, these ones don't leak. And I've now opened it up so it breathes a bit better and I can see a lot better. Um, the idea is to, to try and make it a, a bit more of a um, pleasant experience um, using this cabinet. Um, as it is, it is just a cheap thing um, and it's not really designed uh, if you're doing large volumes of vapor blasting work um, but if you just have a little bit here and there like I mentioned last time um, this will actually do it so um, I'll get into this and then there's one more thing that I want to show you after I've done this so let me plug the air in about ready to go. So it's still quite slow, like last time. And as um, I keep saying, because there's limited media in here, it's good just to go and give it a quick wash down and make sure the media is sinking to the bottom of the hop every now and again. Um, another thing is, it also uses a lot of air. Uh, just like any vapor blaster, just because it's a small cheap cabinet, doesn't mean you're going to get around that. Um, it still will use a lot of air and as you can hear my compressor come in quite quickly uh, it's just a small 12 CFM unit but um, it is bringing that that up to a finish 
You can see right on the corner there has already come up. Sorry about that. It's already started coming up, so um, and you can see the media already building up in there as well. So um, I'm just going to keep going at that. I have just been working on my other cabinet, so this seems incredibly slow. Um, but like I say, it is actually already starting to bring up that finish. The other thing I did was um, put Rain-X on the screen. Um, and that's helped a lot as well. Uh, because the screen cleans a lot, quick, uh, a lot more quickly. Um, one other thing that I've tried just now, which may have been a bit of a mistake, is I put a bit more water in there. seem to like the less water but as you can see that's already coming up I'm gonna make a couple of changes um, just to see if it works any better but I can already say with these gloves in there um, it's a million times better just not um, sitting in there with your your fingers swimming in it as it all runs down the bottom of your arms much nicer to have some nice um, decent gloves so um, I'm just gonna make a quick change and then I will come back to it Right, so I've just uh, had a bit of a play around with a couple of things. Um, and I'm going to see if that goes a little quicker. So let's see how we go. Yeah, definitely better. So water level's hugely important in these. Um, and I think I'd like to play around with media a bit more. Um, but as you can see, like last one, it is working, it is doing what it's supposed to, um, but it's a lot slower. So I would like to do a bit more research also on the guns to find out just why these ones work better, whether it's just because their Venturi works a lot nicer, um, whether it's the shape of the, uh, the slurry, um, cavities in there or whether it's something else but um, I think it would be very interesting to work that out sorry I didn't realize that was there I've been looking past the camera so um, I'll pay a little bit more attention to what I'm doing there Next time I've got the large compressor out, I think I might uh, change the fittings over and um, run it on the big compressor and just see, and maybe even pump up the um, pump up the working pressure a little bit as well. Um, I think because it doesn't have a pressurized slurry feed coming in, it is having to pick it all up um, through the suction. Um, whether or not my media would continue to last as well at higher pressures so um, and I may also play with the air jets on the inside so you can see it is working I'll just do another couple of bits and bring them up as best I can and we'll take another look so I think it may be a little bit faster than it was when I first set it up um, but definitely much nicer to work with um, even with the phone in front of me uh, I'm not sure how good you can see that so I'll just give it a little bit more and then we'll pull it out it's quite hard to tell on this piece um, I may chuck something else in there. Maybe a little bit better to get a visual representation. 
is an old brass check valve. see how that comes up and here we go have to keep reiterating how important it is to make sure that media is actually seeping back down to the bottom of the, the hopper there because um, what will happen is it will draw that up the water will take its place so you can't quite see down there where the pickup is but it won't be picking up enough glass so it's very important to make sure that it is actually resetting down to the bottom Try one more dirty part. Maybe that bit there. I'll let the compressor build up. Uh, Lower this down first. So you can probably see on the back of my hand there all the glass that's building up. It's quite a lot of it there. So it just goes to show there is quite a good deal of media getting picked up um, by the nozzle. You can feel it come out in clumps a little bit. So it's definitely um, far less superior than systems with a, a positive slurry feed, a pressure, uh, pressurized slurry feed. Um, but the whole purpose of this was it's just another step in trying to make things a lot more accessible. So um, a cheap 3D printed nozzle, um, and like, like I keep mentioning these, these cabinets, a lot of people have them, so that was the reason I chose this one. Um, I have been playing around a little bit with the nozzles, but so far, uh, this I think is an 8mm, uh, this seems to have been working um, pretty well. Um, the video is getting a little bit long, so I might get into it before that compressor finishes. Uh, must be close, but uh, we'll just do that last little part on the hex there. Yeah, there we go, we're full. So, last part of the hex there, and we'll just see how uh, quickly it'll bring that up. So there we go. It came up relatively well and quite quickly too. Um, so I'll pull both parts out, we'll have a look, and there was one more thing that I wanted to mention on this. We'll start with the brass. Um, clean water. So I think that was the last, last part that we just did. So it came out relatively quickly. Uh, the reason I put the brass in there was just because uh, with a tarnish on there, you can see it a lot better um, since I don't have a, a windscreen wiper, a window wiper or a, or a rinse function. Um, it was quite hard to see uh, the speed in which it was blasting the aluminium. Um, so that's that and I'll just give the aluminium a rinse as well. Um, there's still much more to go on it. Just see on the edge there um, how that was coming up. So you just flip it over, and that's what it looks like when you spend the time on it. Um, that took quite a long time though. Um, this was very, very slow, and I actually turned the camera off. So there's still some more to go on that. I want to make a couple more changes, and we'll come back to it. Um, but before we're done, we'll make sure this part 
uh, looks like this right the way through. Um, so the last thing that I wanted to show um, was this little contraption. It's a bit dirty now that it's being used. Um, but at the time when I was building this, I was waiting on a shipment of more pedals. Um, so I ended up jumping on CAD and making this little pedal. So um, pretty simple, um, relatively watertight. Uh, it's not the best, but because it is going to be around water, um, I made sure, I mean, I could have done it a lot more simply, um, but by doing it this way, it houses everything on the inside. It's only 12 volts, it's not the biggest deal, um, but it was more a, a reliability thing. So, um, here we go, 3D printed pedal. It just uses the 3D printed parts, a um, couple of screws, and on the inside is just like a regular limit switch. Um, I think I might even have some extras in my drawer. Hang on for a second. Yeah, something like that. Um, pretty much the same as that without the um, the the roller on it. So uh, there's just this, um, and that sits in there a little bit like that. Sorry, a little bit like that. Uh, you can see those two countersunk, countersunk screws go through it, uh, and then there's just a little cam hanging off. The shaft that runs through there um, and there you go nice and simple we could do with a bit of a spring upgrading it um, but that's, that's where we're at at the moment and it seems to be working quite well so really really pleased with these nozzles um, they're becoming a little bit more popular um, and see this one at the time when I throw it together um, I just put the brass part in there I think I hadn't finished printing the other one and I wanted to get into it um, so yeah, they're designed so you can just screw on a, a half inch um, hose bar threaded um, BSP. So that'll fit in, in that one and also on this one. The other reason that I wasn't too um, worried about having that in there was because um, it's got about an 8 or a 9 mil hole on the back of it and I wanted to check to see whether or not um, the pressure in the back of that was enough to actually damage the threads. So it um, seems to be doing what it's supposed to do so far. Um, you can see why the media everywhere uh, it is actually working and um, it is uh, picking up enough media on the bottom so it could do with more could always do with more um, but that's not the point of these cabinets uh, I sound like a broken record but um, it's just trying to find ways to make this as accessible as possible um, as cheaply as possible so uh, it's not perfect but as you can see, uh, it is possible to get pretty good results. Um, so it's probably not the best thing altogether, but if you have one of these cabinets or if you can get one cheaply um, and you only want to do a little bit here and there, this is probably a, a pretty good uh, pretty good starting point. Um, and I'll probably put a bit more documentation together on this, exactly how I've done this one, uh, like I've done previously. Um, but yeah, that's where we're at now. So just to reiterate what we've done, um, I put on the solenoid on the side there. Um, there's water dripping out of there, so I'm thinking I may end up um, putting a drain in here or just sealing it up a bit more. But as you can see, there is a lip in there. Um, so we've just done the vent on the side. And if you remember, the water was running down here the air was getting squeezed out underneath and it was actually blowing up all over my shoulders and was soaking me. Uh, we replaced those lights. Just strip lighting on the inside of some aluminium extrusion and then some 3D printed brackets. Uh, we just put a hole in the side of this so now the switch still works for the lighting. Uh, and then we had to seal uh, the gap between here, just having a quick look under, it looks pretty dry, um, doesn't look like it's leaking anymore, um, and then of course we changed the gloves uh, to these rubber ones, they look like giant dishwashing gloves, um, and we got rid of this type here, and once again, just to reiterate what I said before, the fabric on the inside 
soaks up water and then doesn't matter um, how tightly they're clamped it will actually seep through so um, some people glue them um, or use silicon which does work I've done it personally um, but if you can get these rubberized gloves much better way of doing it um, so that's about it for this um, it's taken a while to get this video up so for that I apologize um, but I'm just about to start another round of stainless cabinet builds um, and I've had another couple of changes that I'm messing around with on this cabinet um, for those who are interested I've had another crack uh, at these guns these guns are everywhere pretty much everyone who's um, got a sandblaster or has started messing around with vapor blasting um, if they don't have one they've seen one or they have access to them they're pretty cheap um, so still not the best results um, so far from what I can tell it's going to take quite a bit of work to get right um, but if I can find where I put it uh, my test piece is around here somewhere um, here we go so uh, it's a bit patchy it's not the greatest finish it's very slow for a pressurized feed gun um, but it is better than it was before so there are a few more things I want to try um, and I'll continue on at that so that's where I'm at at the moment. Um, I have started another job. So that's been keeping me busy three days a week. Um, this video is getting a bit long though. So as always, thanks for watching. If you have any questions or queries, things you want answered or are topics for videos, feel free to leave them in the in comment section. Um, and um, give us a like. And if you haven't subscribed already, please consider that also. Thanks for watching.